In this exercise we are going to delineate uh, catchment and streams solely based on open data. We'll first start with uh, finding the location of our catchment. We are going to delineate the Ruhr catchment and we use the Quick Map Services plugin. After installing the Quick Map Services plugin you can find it under the web menu. If you go to settings and go to the more services tab you can get the contributed pack which allows you to use many more services and have a long list like I have here. From there we choose OSM OSM standard which gives us a world map of uh, OpenStreetMap. And then we zoom into our area of interest. So we're looking for the Ruhr River and the outlet is uh, somewhere in the Netherlands in a place called Roermond. Uh, we can uh, pan to it, it's where the Ruhr River flows into the Meuse. And that's where we are going to define later our outlet of the catchment. So Roermond as a city, there's been some uh, human interference with the hydrology as we can see here. And we see different uh, rivers with their outlet in the, the Meuse River. And then we zoom out to have on the screen the whole catchment. So the river Ruhr originates somewhere in the Eiffel area in Germany. It's over there. And then it flows northwards to the border with the Netherlands to come up in Romont. So here we are changing the projection of the project, the on-the-fly reprojection. And I'm checking here which UTM zone we should use. And Apparently it's not zone 31, which we use uh, for most of the Netherlands, but it is zone 32 uh, north that we need. So we choose zone uh, 32 north, and then our project is automatically on the fly reprojected to UTM zone 32 north. The next step is to zoom in on the area that covers the whole catchment. That's of course a bit of uh, an estimate we need to make because we don't know exactly how big the catchment will be. Um, it is important that we take it not too small because then our result will be uh, a bit squared on the sides. And if we make it too big, then um, it will take too much calculation time. So, well, here is the source and then it goes to Roermond to the outlet, so that's about it. So we'll use another plugin, the SRTM Downloader, the Shuttle Radar Topography Mission Downloader, to download the tiles of the 30 meter resolution DEM, the one arc second DEM that is freely available uh, through this plugin. You can set it to the canvas extent and then it will take the area that is in our map canvas and then uh, we choose a folder where we want to store the tiles. It comes in tiles. Let's create a folder Ruhr. And then we click download. And also we have checked load images to QGIS. There you have to give your credentials for um, this data repository. If not, you can see the links to create uh, your user account. After logging in, the data will be fetched from the internet and loaded into QGIS automatically. When it says download complete, we can uh, continue. So what we see here is uh, different tiles. If we switch them on and off, we can see what area they cover. And we can already see that we have a bit too many uh, for our catchment. So the next step is to uh, mosaic. That means to merge the raster tiles that we need for our catchment delineation. So 
I'm removing here the ones that I think are not necessary. So we only have the three tiles uh, covering the catchment. Then I go to raster miscellaneous build virtual raster. We're going to make a virtual mosaic because that's not the end product. So we can keep it virtual to save a bit of data and calculation time. And here we can choose for the resolution average highest or lowest, but they all the tiles have the same resolution, so it doesn't really matter what you fill in there. Then we have to uncheck the box, place each input file into a separate band. That is needed for remote sensing images where each layer is merged into a stack of layers uh, that can be used uh, in remote sensing analysis, for example. The resampling algorithm will be uh, nearest neighbor, so it uses the purest values of your pixels. Let me give it a name for the virtual raster that will come out of this uh, merge algorithm. We call it DM mosaic. Mosaic is a technical term for merging of rasters. You see the GDAL uh, command is executed and uh, there it is. So we can remove the tiles that we don't need. So we only see our virtual raster. And then we can rename it. That's always good practice because virtual doesn't say much. So we call it DEM mosaic. That will be then the name of the layer and in the different tools we can always find back uh, the, this uh, label of the name of the layer. The next step is to reproject uh, this mosaic because it is now still in EPSG 4326, which means a geographic projection, which is latitude, longitude. So we go to raster and projections and we choose warp. Make sure you have your input layer there and we choose then the projection of the project, which is UTM zone 32 north. For the node data value of the output bands, we can put a value minus 9999, for example, and the resolution of 30 meters, so we are sure we will get an output raster with 30 meter pixels. And as resampling, we choose nearest neighbor, which is important because we are going to do calculations, quantitative analysis. Well, if you just want a smooth map to come out, like if you are georeferencing a scanned map, you will use another resampling method. So uh, the GDAL warp command is applied. In this case, you can see how it's uh, executed and then uh, we uh, choose an output uh, layer name and this time we don't want it uh, to be virtual so we call dm we project it and then we choose a tiff to make it a geotiff and then we save it and we run the algorithm. When it's done, we can see the result on the screen. Of course, it's because of the on-the-fly reprojection overlapping with the other one. So we can now remove the virtual uh, mosaic. And we have here there the geotiff. We rename it. And call it DM reprojected. The next step is to make a subset out of this to cover only our area of interest. So we make sure we only see OpenStreetMap. We go to Raster Extraction, Clip Raster by Extent. And there uh, we choose the DM Reprojected. And if we click the three dots on the clipping extent, we can say there, select Extent on Canvas. For that purpose, it's very important that your on-the-fly reprojection is matching with your uh, layer that you want to clip, in our case the DM reprojected, and we can draw a box. So make sure the box is big enough to fit your catchment, but not too big, uh, because then the calculation times will be too long and your computer might be running out of, er out of memory. So we save it, let's call it DM subset, so subset is the technical term and clipping is, uh, is the tool. 
and then we run the algorithm and there we have our clips map there it is now we can rename the layer because clip doesn't say much let's call it the um, subset And what we're going to do now is to fill the sinks. So all these DEMs have a problem uh, that they have sinks and spikes and there's an iterative procedure uh, to an algorithm to fill it and we use the Wang and Liu method from Saga. So we fill in the dialog and we can only choose in this version of QGIS s.files as output but that doesn't matter, it's also a GDAL supported raster format like the GeoTIFF. So we can um, here we only need to fill the DEM, so we uncheck the other boxes that will come later. We'll do that in other uh, dialogues. So this generates a hydrologically corrected DEM, removing all the uh, sinks where water can get stuck. Now this is the most uh, calculation intensive um, algorithm that we use in this procedure, therefore it was important that we had a subset and not the full data set. It uses the Saga algorithms, and that's the nice thing about QGIS, that it integrates algorithms from third-party providers. And when it's done, we'll see the field DEM appearing in our layers list. We can remove our previous steps, we don't need that anymore, and we continue with the field DEM. Let's uh, style it a bit. So we go to Symbology, Single Band Pseudo Color, and from there uh, we first have to look at the minimum maximum value. So we can choose the whole raster and we can say we want the actual values, and then we use um, a color ramp. When we click on it, we can make our own color ramp but we can also use the drop-down menu to choose a tool to make a new color ramp. So here you see all color ramps and we can say create a new color ramp and if we choose their catalog, CPT City, we can choose from some predefined color ramps. And here you see for QGIS, for topography, and we choose elevation since it is a DEM and then it automatically generates a scale which you can adapt of course and there it is our DEM visualized with different colors now, a nice thing to do for better visualization is uh, if we duplicate the layer and uh, we create a hill shade so check the box and there's a nice trick if we press F7 we get this layer styling panel on the right side of our screen and there we can choose hill shade and it will be directly applied to the map in the map canvas so all changes you make there are live so if we move this uh, rotation of the Sun the azimuth we see it live changing and we know that uh, when it is in when the Sun artificial sunlight is in the northwest we get the best uh, relief representation you can also use a set factor there or play with the multi-directional uh, option but uh, for our purpose this is uh, okay so let's zoom into an area with a lot of elevation differences a bit upstream so this is our DEM a uh, classic trick is to make it a bit transparent so we move it to 70% transparency make sure that it's applied to the one that you choose so in our case I had to select fill DEM and then I move it to let's say 70% so we see our hill shade below. That works nicely but uh, there's a nicer method available in QGIS where we use the blending mode. If we put it on multiply it uh, really integrates values of layers below the one that we choose to be blended. So the blended mode really here adds the shaded relief to uh, the elevation map. So let's also rename our hill shade so we don't get confused later. It's called hill shade. 
Then when we zoom to the layer, we see the whole layer now with this uh, dramatic effect of the hill shade. This is visualization, but with the DEM we can do also other things under the raster menu and then analysis. Uh, you can find different options for calculating uh, slopes. You can even calculate a hill shade map. What we now did was uh, shading by the symbology. So you can calculate the slope or the aspect. Uh, but for our purpose here, it is important to uh, use this field DEM to continue with the analysis. The next step is to calculate the Strahler order. So in the processing toolbox, we can look for Strahler order. Make sure you have the field DEM as an input and we save it to a file. Note that also here is an s.raster file from Saga. We call it Strahler and it will calculate Strahler orders from 1 to 10, where 1 are the smallest streams and 10 are the largest streams. The idea is that we use this later in another algorithm to set the threshold for what we would call a river. Now the Strahler orders from 1 to 10 are calculated. And there it is. We need some uh, visualization. So let's uh, make a good symbology there. Choose single band pseudo color. In this case it's a, an ordinal map, so it can use a ramp. And it's good that it goes from um, from white to blue, where more blue means bigger river, so that is uh, that's perfect. But we just make to uh, have to be sure that we have here uh, ten classes from one to ten. So we have to move it to equal interval, and then we choose ten classes, and we see now we have ten unique classes. When we click OK, we can see the result. With in darker blue the bigger rivers and in lighter blue the smaller ones. And now it is the question where to put the threshold. Now that's uh, calibration that we need. So what we do is we have our OpenStreetMap layer and we have this Strahler order layer. And we can see already that the bigger ones, the higher orders, follow uh, the streams. But which order exactly uh, is the cutoff? Uh, we need to calibrate it. So we can do that by going to raster and then the raster calculator and there we can say strala order larger or equal than a certain threshold value um, so we click there and then we can choose there uh, 5 or we can choose uh, 8 or we can play a bit around with the value let's use 8 in this case and we save it in the folder that we created before and we call it strahler.tiff uh, we add the 8 so we know that that's the cutoff value that we used here so it will give a 1 for all the pixels that are true so larger or equal than strahler 8 and 0 for all the ones that are false so we get a boolean map with only true and false and we can with some styling also make it a bit more intuitive so we can remove all the classes here that we don't need and select also multiple by holding shift and we add here class 0 so it's only 0 and 1 and we are going to change the ones to blue because it represents water don't worry a bit about the, the 0 because we are going to make that one transparent so if we go to properties and then transparency we can add the 0 And then what we see, of course, we have to remove the Strahler order map that's below. We can see now in blue all the ones, all the true values, and see how well it follows the river. Now we see it approximates it. It's not uh, very good in this area. There are also some lakes that intervene with uh, the natural flow. So if we go more upstream, we, we get uh, better matches in the part where the river has not been uh, straightened. So this is just gravity-based flow. And of course we are looking at uh, Strahler value 8. Maybe you need a, a lower value to better represent um, the river. So let's have a look a bit further upstream what happens there near the source. 
of course some big mines in this area and if we look really upstream we see a much better match because it's more natural there although there are some dams and there it really follows the meanders so let's go to the outlet to uh, Romont So here's Roumont, here's the outlet, and we're going to use uh, the channels, channel network and drainage basins uh, algorithm to delineate the streams. So as an input we have to choose there the filled DEM. In the threshold we use the calibrated threshold. For here, for now, I use the value of 8. And there is, as different outputs, we have the flow direction. Let's call it flow there. And there's flow connectivity, we don't need that. Strala order we already had, so it will only reproduce that. Drainage basin, there is two times in this dialog drainage basin. One will result in a raster, the other one in a vector. So let's use the way where it automatically converts it to a vector. The same for the, the channels. So the channels are derived from Strahler, but then converted to a vector layer lines and there we have the basins which will be a polygon layer uh, the junctions we don't need that so then we can run the algorithm again an algorithm from uh, saga And there's the result. Close the dialog. And let's see what we got here. We got flow direction, but we need to work on the styling. Let's move to layer. And we got the channels, a bit in a strange color at the moment. But we see the different channels in the whole uh, area of the DEM. And we also see the boundaries of the drainage basins. Got a bit square in the south, so I have chosen the DM a bit too small, and then uh, that happens. So you know how that looks like. So you should prevent that and make uh, your clip, your subset, a bit larger. Now let's style the flow direction map. Choose again single band pseudo color. And with a bit of customizing, you can come up with a legend like this. It's a directional legend, so northwest should be very close to north in terms of uh, colors so that's always a bit tricky and you should also uh, take care of the coding of the flow direction now if you google qgis saga flow direction legend you will find uh, on stack exchange some discussion about it to find the right values now in the same way we can style the channels these are these are vector so let's make them uh, blue so we recognize them as rivers so that looks great We see uh, it from the source to the mouth. And we can also style our drainage basins. And this is not a single symbol, but categorized. Each catchment has its own number. Uh, so we need to choose also the column to look at. We can choose value, which has a unique value for each uh, basin and we click classify each unique value gets a color apply it and there we see the result and the big one here is uh, the Ruhr catchment already so now we need to find the coordinates of the outlet because we want to calculate um, the catchment uh, which pixels in fact drain to that outlet so let's look uh, here where we see that the Ruhr comes into the Meuse River although it's a bit human 
controlled, it's not very precise, but if we take a point there on the line, and a good way to find the coordinates in the projection that we have the project is to use um, the coordinate capture tool, which comes with uh, QGIS, and there we can say uh, start capture. And then it's very important that we really place the point very close to the line because it needs to be in a 130 meter pixel. Uh, if it's outside of the river pixel, then according to the model, there is no river. From the processing toolbox, we choose uh, the upslope area uh, algorithm and we paste the coordinates in. So make sure you have the UTM coordinates. So the first field is the latitude longitude coordinates and the second one are the map coordinates. For elevation, be sure you choose the field DM and we leave everything else on default. You can play with it later, so try uh, other algorithms and other thresholds. And we call this the Ruhr catchment. It will be a raster which has value 0 for outside of the catchment and value 100 for inside the catchment. Again, a Saga algorithm. Here we see the result, but we're very zoomed in, so let's uh, zoom to the layer. And there we see our catchment, and what we already concluded before is that it's cut off on the south side. We didn't make it big enough. Um, but for the rest it looks okay. Now the only thing is that we don't need it as a raster, but as a vector, so we can convert it. Go to Raster, Conversions, Polygonize, and there we choose this upslope area map. And it will use the digital number, so 0 and 100, to create polygons. So we save it. Um, you can save it as a geo package, but uh, in this case we'll save it as a shape file. Good thing about geo packages is that we can put all the layers into one geo package, so you can try that. But now I will save it only in separate files. And let's call this the Ruhr catchment shape file. And uh, that's basically it. When I uh, run this, it will do this gdoc command and it results in a vector layer consisting of polygons. We can check the attribute table. And there we see three entries. Number one is clear when we select it. Number two is unclear. And the last one, the zero, is the outside. So we toggle editing mode. And we're going to remove these zeros first because we are not interested in the outside polygon. So now it's gone. And yeah, we want to know what this second value of 100 is. This can sometimes happen. And there's this uh, function uh, in the zoom panel. Here you can say zoom to uh, selection. And we see that there's one pixel, which is a bit strange. So the polygon makes a little loop there. And uh, we're going to remove that. So I go back to the attribute table. And I select this second two and then I delete it and I save the result and now we have only the vector layer left. You still see it on the screen but not select that's because of the raster so I remove that one and now we see the vector layer. I'm going to uh, rename it. Let's call it the Roar Catchment. Now I also want to change the style and there we choose transparent fill and for the stroke color we will choose uh, red and we make it a little thicker and now we have the boundary of our catchment in red as a shape file. Now it also would be nice to clip our uh, rivers, our channels, to the polygon of the Ruhr catchment. So that's what we do with this clip tool. Give it an output name. And we can save it in a geo package or a shapefile. 
With the geo package you can put everything together, but we will choose here a shapefile called Ruhr River. And then we can run the algorithm and we see if we remove the original one that now we have the clipped ones. We can copy the style still from the original one. Copy style. And then we paste it. And now we see the rivers nicely clipped to the catchment boundaries. We can do the same for the DM. Choose extraction, clip raster by mask layer. Then of course your mask layer is the polygon. So we choose the filled DEM as an input. And the mask layer, the Ruhr catchment. It's also good to uh, specify a no data value. And I can put there also minus 9999. Then we run it. And now we can copy the style from the original DEM to this one. But we still need to make the zeros transparent. Let's remove some of the other layers. We add the zero. And here we see the result. So we're going to uh, rename also this layer, so we don't get confused. And we can do the same for this one. And we can clean up a bit what we don't need. And we can even cut the hill shade so it matches the extent of our uh, clipped DEM, so we don't have the, the sides. So we can remove this one and we make a duplicate of the other one, like we did before. And then we rename it to a hill shade. And then we can also then use the F7 to change it into a hill shade. And we have to add the missing values. So if we go to transparency there, we can add the zero. Apply. And it's live applied. And there we see the result. So this is how we delineate streams and catchments using only open data in QJS 3.